So you just got a new camera, or maybe you've been photographing for a while. Before we get into all the technical talk about cameras and shutter speeds, ISOs, all that stuff, let's talk about different genres of photography. Now these definitions that we use, they're not the technical definitions, they're just how we see these different genres. All we're doing is giving you an idea of what's out there in the world to photograph. No matter what you choose to photograph, make sure you enjoy it and have fun. Are you ready? Let's get started. First, let's talk about the most common type of photography, which is portraiture. Portraiture is simply photographing people. It could be an individual or it could be a group of people. Now you could have a traditional portrait, which pretty much encompasses head and shoulders, and that's gonna be maybe a corporate headshot. You could also have a more environmental type of portrait, and that could be anything from senior photos, family photos, children, or even newborns. The next genre is documentary and reportage. As the name implies, it's simply documenting events and people. This includes photojournalism and even war photography. Street and travel photography is simply documenting the people, places, and environments, either where you live or where you travel. Fashion photography is something that you'll see in magazines, in stores, and on billboards. The photo shoots can be complicated and include a whole team of professionals to make happen. Now, sports photography can include anything from photographing your child on the soccer field, to a professional on a football field, to a gymnast at the Olympics. Event photography is simply photographing an event. It could be a dinner, a ceremony, or just a little party. Now we're coming to my favorite genre, wedding photography. This is what I do for a living and I love it. No two weddings are ever the same. And there's always something unexpected happening. Wedding photography combines event photography, portraiture, and documentary photography all at the same time. All the genres of photography that we talked about so far involve working with people. And if you're not comfortable with that or perhaps enjoy time on your own, then the following genres of photography might be for you. Astrophotography usually involves photographing anything astro, and that could include objects within our solar system, whether it's the sun, the moon, or other planets, or could also include photographing objects outside of our solar system, including the stars. The next genre of photography is nature photography, and that one is a big one because it includes a number of subgenres. Landscape photography, as the name implies, is about photographing landscapes, and that could include grand vistas, forests, lakes, rivers, and other natural scenes. The second subgenre of nature photography is wildlife photography, and that one involves photographing wild animals in their habitat. Next up, we have macro photography, and that one involves photographing subjects at very close distances to make them appear larger than you normally see them. The last subgenre is underwater photography, which involves photographing live creatures underwater. The next genre is architectural photography, in which you're photographing bridges, interior and exterior of buildings and other man-made structures. If you enjoy cooking and love photographing fruits, vegetables, and maybe finished plates, then food photography might be for you. Last but not least, we have product photography, where objects are photographed for commercial use. Those objects could include things like watches, purses, shirts, shoes, and other items. Now that we talked about different genres of photography, hopefully you got excited about using your camera. But there are also gear considerations when it comes to different genres of photography. So let's talk about gear next. 